Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be going over uh, Security Plus Lab number eight. We're going to be managing certificates with OpenSSL, an open source uh, Linux based certificate management program. I'm going to teach you some syntax and some ways to create these certificates. And we're going to do some things with the certificates. We're going to save them and we're going to change their file type, things like that. I'm also going to show you a little bit about what certificates are and hopefully you'll learn just about a little bit about transport layer security, how it works, or secure socket slayer. Remember, we don't use secure socket slayer anymore. Now it's transport layer security. So even though the term SSL has been around, it's still used. Uh, we use transport layer security. We don't use SSL anymore. But we're going to learn all about that today. Okay. If you have any questions, please leave a chat. Uh, otherwise, you know, let me know. You could also email info at cybercrafttraining.com. Happy to answer all your questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're already logged into our Kali Linux machine. And our scenario here, we're gonna use OpenSSL to manage our certificates, generate certificates, and generate a certificate signing request or a CSR. We're also gonna convert our certificate to different formats, which can be helpful when you're managing Linux and Windows machines, because each of those machines has a different preference on the type of certificate file they, they want. So we're also going to be uh, you know, we'll, we'll, certificates are going to be used if you're managing your own public key infrastructure. You also would manage the certificate if you host your own website. You know, for example, if you look at cybercrafttraining.com, if we were to go up in the browser bar, I'm using Firefox right now, and then click more information. Here I have a certificate verified by cPanel Incorporated. Now there's some major certificate authorities out there. There's DigiCert, it's one of the, the major ones. cPanel is a, is a minor certificate authority, but the way the internet works, the way we're allowed to have uh, secure connections is through digital certificates. So here's a certificate. Remember, a certificate is a digital document. This is the one for cybercrafttraining.com. Has information about uh, how it's secured. Here we have the algorithm, Rivas Shamir Adelman, with a key size of 2,048 bits. And we have a serial number here. This uses the signature algorithm, uses secure hashing algorithm, or SHA-256, using RSA encryption. And we have some more information here. You know, there's all sorts of, uh, the expiration date of the certificate would be on here. We could find that not before 6 December 2022, not after 6 March 2023. So this certificate will expire March 6 March 2023. And it's issued by the Certificate Authority, which is cPanel Incorporated. So that's the one for CybercraftTraining.com. Now let's take a look. We're going to create our own certificate in uh, using OpenSSL. So let's see how we can do that. All right, so we've signed into our Kali box. We're going to open a terminal, of course. Most of these are done using the terminal. And remember, since we're using Kali, we're not going to be able to use the typing help uh, from the right-hand side. So we're just going to use our commands here. Most of the commands for OpenSSL start with OpenSSL. Very similar to most Linux, Linux uh, programs. So OpenSSL version is gonna tell us the version. And then we have a question, probably one of the easier questions you'll get on the lab. What version is OpenSSL? We see it's 1.1 right there. Okay. Now we're gonna make a directory that we're gonna use to store all of our keys. So we're gonna make directory member mkdir, make directory, and we'll call that directory keys. We've made that directory, okay? And then we can change directory to keys. So now we're in the keys directory, cd keys. So now we're gonna, again, use OpenSSL. OpenSSL as our starting command, and genra, or genrsa. So we're generating an RSA uh, certificate, remember, I said that we had that RSA encryption used on cybercrafttraining.com. Same type of key we're creating here. Well, very similar. So we're generating RSA encryption, okay? Then we do dash out, output, and we're going to specify that as corp.515 support.com. That's the notional technical support site that we have um, as part of the, all of the labs. We're also going to add to that dot .key. So we're going to add dot .key there, and we're going to specify the key size 2048. Now, this is the same key size, remember, that we're using 
for CybercraftTraining.com. We have an RSA encryption algorithm, key size 2048. So this lab's pretty accurate when it comes to keys here, okay? So we create that key. If it works, uh, unless I misspelled something, it should have worked. I might have. I tend to misspell. Yeah, I forgot a dash in front of out. That's okay. I just hit up to recall what I just typed and then space, put that dash in there. Okay, now that should work. All right, generating RSA private key, 2048 bits long, which is very secure. And remember, RSA is an excellent encryption algorithm. All right, Rivas, Shamir, Adelman, those guys are geniuses. They made a pretty good algorithm. Okay, so we've created that, that key there. Now we can use the cat command to recall and view that key. Remember, cat just displays in the terminal window uh, whatever type of file you want or results. So we're just gonna cat and we see our key. There's a bunch of gobbledygook, but this is, this is what the key is gonna look like. Remember, the key is just an encrypted piece of data, okay? That's all it is. It it's, uh, works with algorithms. So it's gonna look like this. I mean, this, isn't, this can be interpreted by by different uh, programs, different devices to create a secure encryption or to encrypt uh, a device, establish a secure connection. So there's lots of uses for keys. We can use keys for digital signatures, all sorts of things. Okay, so we've displayed the key. Now we're going to extract the public key. Now remember, we made here, uh, we made a key pair, okay? So this is asymmetric encryption. Remember, if you have a key pair, it's always asymmetric encryption. We have a public key and a private key. The public key, we're always going to keep secret. The public key, we're going to share. The private key, we always keep secret. The public key, we always sh we can share to anyone. All right. And with those two keys, we can, establish, we can protect integrity. We can provide authentication. We're not going to, on its own, we're not going to be able to um, provide confidentiality. But we can verify identities. Okay, so let's go ahead and ver extract the public key here. Now this is, as you see here, this is the private key that we've uh, displayed there. Our begin RSA private key, here's the private key, end RSA private key. What we're gonna do here is we're going to extract the public key. So we're gonna do open SSL, RSA, dash in, and then we, we say that same, uh, specify the same string that we did before. And I didn't, I missed half of that. <laughs> it's okay. That's why we have the up and down arrows. Okay, dot key, and then we go dash public output, pub out. Now this is different from our basic command. Remember our first command was just out. That's going to default to the private key. Now we're going to do public key output corp.515 support.com underscore, it should be public.key, yeah. Underscore public.key. Okay. And I misspelled something, that's okay. What did I misspell here? Corp 515 support.com.key pub out corp 515 support.com underscore public dot key. If you see what I missed here, please let me know. I do like to do these live like this because. Oh, I missed the out. I see. We have to specify pub, pub out, and then dash out. I like to think that when I mess up, it gives my students confidence that it's okay to mess up in these labs because it's easy to miss one or two little things in these strings. Okay, now it's writing the RSA key. So we're good. And then we can... Uh, we should be fine there. And we should see our two keys if we want. Now 
We just say ls and then we see our two keys. 515 corp.515support.com.key. That's the name we picked for our private key. And then corp.515support.com underscore public key for the public key. So we have a key pair now. And then we can display that public key if we want. Cat corp. Dot, dot five fifteen support dot com underscore public dot key. And there's the public key. So very good. Begin public key and public key. That's the public key. Now you note that the public key is significantly smaller than the private key. Okay, so very good, very good. Everything's working correctly, we're doing great. Again, if you have any questions, you know, let me know, drop me an email, uh, or leave a comment. Okay, so generate a certificate signing request. Remember, a CSR is what we use to request from a certificate authority like for example with cybercrafttraining.com we would request from cPanel uh, that we'd want a certificate for our website or if we were you know maybe we had GoDaddy as our service provider we'd, we'd request that from GoDaddy or uh, we could use Digicert. Digicert's one of the larger ones. So we would do that first by generating a certificate signing request that would go to the certificate authority okay to and the survey authority would read our request and then grant us a certificate or not based on that request. Okay, so that's going to require the creation of a new key. So we're going to do open SSL rec dash new dash key requs that command uh, for the request corp dot five one five Make sure you spell that correctly. Corp.515support.com.key and then dash out. Remember. And then we're going to output that to corp.515support.com.csr for certificate signing requests. Okay. Now it's going to prompt us for some information. Now, as part of the certificate signing request, you have to provide information like where is your organization located, uh, the name of your organization, uh, your your organizational name, which is uh, a way of describing different business functions or different uh, different departments within your company, the common name, which is the name that would be used for the certificate or for the um, certificate itself and then there's some other qualifiers you can add to this you can add like state province and these are very similar to what you'd find like a, a database okay so we do country code first okay so we're gonna do US and we're gonna hit enter it's gonna keep asking us state uh, let's go with Nevada locality city uh, let's go Las Vegas I spell in Las Vegas right? <laughs> I think so. All right. Organizational name. We'll do 515 support. This one you want to keep the same. And then we're going to make this one web services for organizational unit name. Common name. We're going to name this as web server. Not corp. 515support.com. Then the email address, we put in an email address in case the certificate authority wants to contact you about this certificate signing request. Oftentimes, in reality, you would just, um, if you were setting up a website, you would use like a website broker or uh, a hosting company to do this for you. But if you're setting up your own public key infrastructure, say you have a large corporation. This can come in handy. You might have somebody, you know, Tom from the sales department or Tom from um, the Las Vegas branch of the company would uh, be requesting for a certificate for maybe a mail server in that office branch. So that's where this can be handy. Okay. We're just going to hit enter here 
for the challenge password, we're not going to put a password on this and we're not going to put a company name. Now we should be able to see that when we hit ls and we do corp.515support.com.csr. Remember ls is listing everything that's in that directory and we're currently in the directory keys. And we're going to score that. Should be able to identify that we're there and we are there. So that's good. Okay. And yep, everything looks good on that end. Uh, and let's verify the certificate request. We're going to open SSL. Request dash text dash input corp not 515 support dot com dot CSR dash no output dash verify. And we're not outputting this anywhere. We're just verifying our request there. And there we see that. So this is the certificate. We're signing request what it looks like. And you can see all of the codes that we put in there, the country code, the state, Las Vegas, the organization, the organizational unit, the, uh, the common name, the email address, all of that's in there. And then we can see RSA public key and we see what everything associated with that. So great, looks really good. Now it says here that the certificate signing request must be sent to the certificate authority using the PEM format. I'm going to run this command and display the CSR command in that format. So we're going to go cat corp.515support.com.csr. Now these, there's different formats, different file types for certificates, PEM being one of them. So now we're displaying that here. Okay, so we would copy all of this this entire block here to uh, into the certificate signing request. Okay, so if we, you know, oftentimes the certificate authority say you, you're establishing this within your company, this is the information they would need. Okay, in that PEM format. So this is readable as a PEM format here. Okay, so this is what you would copy this, and this would be your CSR. So this is if you're thinking, what is a CSR? That's what it looks like right there. Okay, and this right here is an encrypted version that includes all the information that we had up here, all of those qualifying elements. All right, doing great. Okay, so now we're gonna LS, and we see we still have our three things. Now we're gonna generate a self-signed certificate. Remember, self-signed certificates, they're not verified by any certificate authority. We're we're creating that SSL on our own, so we don't have a third party, a trusted third party to verify that for us. So we're going to make a new request for a new key using RSA 2048. We're going to put in a quality, we're going to put in dash nodes. And then the key output or key out is going to be court. Dot 515 support dot com dot key dash x509 dash days. The days is going to tell us when this certificate expires. So, just like the certificate we looked at earlier, this certificate is going to have an expiration date. So we're going to put that expiration date as 365 days. It's going to last one year. And we're going to output that to corp.515support.com.crt. And I misspelled 50. I didn't put 509, I put 508. That's okay. There we go. Works great. Okay. So we're going to generate that. It's going to say generate RSA private key. Writing the new private key to this, uh, to this output. Now we're going to ask for, again, 
our information. So let's go ahead, US. Uh, we'll just do New York. And then we'll do New York. Organizational name, we're gonna stick with 515 support. Now let's go with Cybercraft. Cybercraft. Cybercraft Web Services. Cybercraft dot cybercraft support dot com. Info at cybercraft training dot com. You can put it whatever you want. And we're just going to verify that that file exists. doesn't matter what, um, we've already named the file. So the stuff we put in the file doesn't really matter. Okay. I mean, it asks to use the same names as specified in the instructions, which great. We didn't do that. <laughs> and I do invite you to try things out and go outside the rails on these. You know, these labs are for you to work with and you're not going to break anything. So if you're working through this lab on your own, go for it. And if you have your Cali box, you're following along. Hey, hopefully you're not going to break anything with your Cali box. <laughs> if you do need to, if you need to learn how to do that, how to create your own home, uh, your own cybersecurity lab, check out our course on how to build your own cybersecurity lab. Uh, it's, I think it's five dollars on our site, so it's a really good course. It teaches you how to do that using all open source materials. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna merge our two files, our CRT and our .key file, uh, into a new format, the PKCS12 format, okay? This is a format for certificates that are commonly used in Windows machines, okay? So .key and .crt files, these are often used with Linux distributions, non-Windows distributions. So we wanna incorporate the Windows PKCS12 that's going to be readable by something like Active Directory. All right. All right. So, and that's what this says here, essentially. Now, PKCS12 files, you either use either .pfx or p12 file extension. So that's what we're trying to get at here. Okay. So we're going to convert those files. So we're going to start again, open SSL. PKCS12 dash export. We're going to name that with dash name. Make sure you remember the uh, parentheses corp dot 515 support dot com. What do we name it? That's fine. Okay. The output is going to be corp not 515 support.com dot pfx so that pfx is going to be that windows friendly key file type all right dash in key corp dot 515 support.com dot key dash input corp dot 515 support.com.crt. Maybe you wonder what are we doing here? Okay, so we're exporting a key as PK, uh, PKCS12. Okay, we're going to output that as corp.515support.com.pfx. Okay, to do that, we're going to input corp.515.com.key. Remember, that is a key we already have created. And corp.515support.com.crt. That's also, oh, I misspelled this. So if you misspell your key, make sure you misspell it again when you put the, put the key there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, instead of saying corp, I'm going to say copper. <laughs> but that's okay. We're taking these two inputs, the CRT and the, the key, the dot key and the dot CRT, and we're going to output them as a PFX file. So that should work. And we're not going to enter a password. We're going to enter that and we're not going to do that. So bam, that should work great. Now let's go ahead and LS. If that worked correctly, we should see it. 
and we do. We have a .pfx file now. So great job. So that hopefully, this is these are just common commands with OpenSSL. You're not going to need for the exam. You're not going to need to like memorize. You'll need to know basic input, basic um, syntax for the exam. So you'll need to know like OpenSSL. Uh, you know maybe export dash export. Probably you probably won't be tested on the real nitty gritty on the the commands for OpenSSL. If you're doing a request, just remember REQ. Uh, so that, that might come up. Most of the time, though, you're going to be asked to recognize what OpenSSL is used for. Remember, it's used to create and manage certificates. You have RSA as a command to create an RSA key. And you would need to know, you'll definitely need to know for the exam your basic Linux commands like cat, ls, make directory, all of that. So the things you practice in these labs are very helpful. I get that question all the time. What do I need to know for the exam? All right, so we're gonna score that, verify that a file exists, and that should work. Yep, we got that, so wonderful. All right, so let's go ahead and do our comprehensive questions. All right, which of the following file extensions is the file extension for certificate request files? Remember, that's a certificate signing request, okay? CSR. Why is it necessary to merge or convert certificate file types? Okay, we want to, uh, the, the cause will issue certificates in a different format from Windows servers that use the certificates. So sometimes you have to translate certificates. Not always, but sometimes. Okay, so that's, that's what we had to do here. And then what is certificate file extension commonly used by Windows servers? Okay, that's going to be that PFX. Remember, we made that PFX key here, and that's why we did that. So we can use that with our Active Directory. All right, so we'll go ahead and grade that lab. I do want to submit that for grading. Thanks for asking. And you know, I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for joining in. Now, if uh, if you're interested in getting training, um, I highly recommend you check out our programs on CybercraftTraining.com. And we offer Security Plus boot camps every month, and uh, we have self-paced Security Plus courses as well. We have discount exam vouchers. You can find the links in the description. And if you have any questions, email me, info at cybercraftjourney.com. And when you do sign up, you're going to get access to that full Learn Labs environment that we have here. All of the labs, all 32 labs just like this one. Uh, this one was lab number eight. And you get the performance-based questions, all the performance-based questions you're going to see on the exam, digital textbook. You're also going to get all of our video courses. So if you like watching me on video, thanks so much. You have 25 hours of videos just like this one. I think it's actually up to 30 hours of videos now because we always update it and add new content as we create it. So 30 hours of videos to help you. We give you six practice exams, everything you need to pass Security Plus, and you get our guarantee. So you're going to pass on the first try or we're going to pay for your, for your uh, next exam too. So exam attempts excluded, and we pay for your second one if you don't pass the first time. And most of our students, vast majority pass in the first try. I think everybody so far this year has passed on two tries. But anyway, thanks so much for joining in. Hope you have a wonderful